Welcome. The purpose of this video is to teach teachers the functions of the TI-15 calculator. In addition, this video could be used to teach students the functions of the TI-15. However, I would show each function in isolation as it relates to standards taught. This video will go through each function quickly. As you watch, pause the video frequently to practice the functions. The first buttons we will look at clear your calculator's memory. This should be done prior to taking a test or assessment so that information is not stored in the calculator. A memory clear should also be done to erase any unusual symbols at the top of the display. These symbols mean that a function is being saved in the calculator and may impact the outcome of a calculation. To do a memory clear, press on and clear at the same time. Upon doing this, you will see mem clear in the display. The next buttons we will look at are for fixing mistakes. Start by entering the number 123. Oops, I meant to enter the number 128. Use the delete arrow key to delete the 3 and change it to an 8. As you can see here, I am pressing the delete key. The arrow in my display is deleting the 3 so I can change it to 8. Let's take a look at another way to fix mistakes. Enter the number 2345 into your calculator. Be careful, you don't need to enter a comma into the calculator. Oops, I meant to tell you to enter the number 6345. The only digit we need to change here is the two in the thousands place. To fix this mistake, use the left arrow key toward the top of your calculator until the arrow in your display is pointing to the digit you want to change. It should be pointing to the two in the thousands place. Make sure the arrow is pointing to the digit, not covering it. Now that you are pointing to the digit, press the delete arrow to delete the two for 2000 and change it to six for 6000. As you can see, I am pressing the left arrow until the arrow in the display is pointing to the digit I want to change. Now I will press the delete arrow to delete this digit and then enter a 6. Please remember that the arrow should be pointing to, not covering, the digit you want to change. Let's take a look at the rounding function. For rounding numbers, you will use the red buttons on the left of your calculator. Since there is not a rounding button, we will instead use the button labeled fix. For example, if you wanted to round to the nearest hundred, you would press fix and then the red 100 key. Let's try this. Let's round the number 1,537 to the nearest hundred. Enter 1,537. Then press the equal or enter button at the bottom right of your calculator. This moves the number to the right side of your display on your calculator. Then press fix and the red 100 button. Before rounding the next number, press the yellow button at the top right of your calculator, labeled clear. You should notice that even when pressing clear, the word fix is still at the top of your display screen. This means that any future calculations done in your calculator will be rounded to the nearest hundred. To fix this, you can do a quick memory clear to erase the rounding function. Now, pause the video to practice rounding the two numbers on the screen. Press play when you are ready to move on. Often, assessments and the EOG won't ask a student to simply round a number. Instead, there may be a word problem that asks for an approximate answer or an estimate. Take a look at this problem. The third graders at Smith Elementary read 6,807 books. The fourth graders read 9,104 books. About how many more books do the fourth graders read than the third graders? When problems ask you for an estimate, approximation, or say things like about how many, you may round. I love getting to round numbers before solving a problem because it makes it so much easier to calculate. Please remember in most situations, you'll want to round the individual numbers from the problem before computing. The intended purpose of rounding is to make computing numbers easier. In addition, in many situations, you will round to the greatest common place. In this problem, both numbers have a ones place, tens place, hundreds place, and thousands place. As you prepare to round, think about which is the greatest common place that you will round to. Here, pause the video and round to solve. You may need some scrap paper to record your rounded numbers. The rounding function can also be used with decimals. This will be handy for fourth and fifth grade students. Let's try something. Do a quick memory clear by pressing the on and clear button at the same time. 
This will erase the rounding function from the calculator's memory. Now, divide 50 by 6. Yikes, this answer isn't very user-friendly due to the amount of digits in the decimal fraction. Plus, fourth graders only work with decimals to the hundredths place. Now, press clear and we'll try something different. Press fix and the hundredth button at the bottom left of your calculator. Since fourth graders work with numbers to the hundredths place, the calculator will now round all calculations to the nearest hundredth. This is especially useful when dividing. Try dividing 50 by 6 again and see how your answer looks different this time. Now we will examine the place value function. We will use the three buttons circled here in white, the problem solving key, the place value key, and the mode key. This function is a bit complicated to use. Begin by pressing the problem solving button, then press mode. Once the display changes to show auto and man, meaning automatic and manual, Press the right arrow to change the calculator to manual. Press enter to save this change and press mode again to exit. You should now see a little problem solving icon at the top left of your calculator's display. Now you are in the problem solving setting. Enter the number 5297 into your calculator. Press the red place value key toward the top of your calculator. Then press the number 2 and observe what happens. You should have noticed that the calculator tells you the place the 2 is in and the 2's value. This function helps you answer two questions. Question 1, in what place is the 2? The 2 is in the hundreds place. Question 2, what is the value of the 2? The value of the 2 is 2 hundreds or 200. Let's try another number. Press clear, but do not press memory clear. Enter the number 1,386. Use the place value button to answer these questions. In what place is the 8? What is the value of 8? Here is another way to use the place value button. Press clear, but do not press memory clear. Enter the number 5,297. Press the place value key. Then press the red thousand button. This function tells us how many thousands are in the number 5,297. Let's try another number. Press clear but not memory clear. Enter the number 4,683. Press the place value key and the red hundred key. How many hundreds are in the number 4,683? You will notice that the calculator says there are 46 hundreds in this number. This is a really hard concept to understand. It might help to build the number with place value blocks. You can tell your calculator to remember any operation you want. For example, you can program your calculator to skip count by a given number, repeatedly multiply by a given number, or repeatedly divide by a given number. These are called constant operations, and they're very helpful in finding missing numbers and patterns. There are many ways to use this function. For this video, we will ask the calculator to repeatedly add by a given number. Let's read this problem. Maria wants to put new tile in her kitchen. She wants to make four rows with five tiles in each row. How many tiles does Maria need? You can solve this problem by skip counting by fives or repeatedly adding five. We will program the calculator so that every time the OP1 button is pressed, it will add five. To program your calculator, Press OP1 plus 5. Then press OP1 again to save this. Now, anytime we press OP1, the calculator will add 5. To solve this problem, we want to skip count by 5 or repeatedly add 5 four times. We'll start at 0, then press OP1 four times to skip count by 5 four times. Let's take a look at division. Solve the equation 38 divided by 3 using the traditional division button. Yikes, look at this answer. The decimal is so long I don't even know how to read it. There is another way to divide using your TI-15 calculator. This is the button directly above the traditional division button and it's called integer divide. This button will give us a whole number answer and a remainder to make the answer easier to understand and work with. At this time, 
Try dividing 38 by 3 again using the integer divide button. There are times when it makes more sense to divide with the traditional division button, creating an answer with a decimal fraction. For example, when working with money or metric measurement. There are also times when it makes more sense to use integer divide and get a remainder. For example, when doing fair shares or trying to find out how many items are left over. If you would like some extra practice using the integer divide button, pause the video now. Now that we've looked at the division buttons on the TI-15, let's look at a division problem from a released EOG. At this point, you may pause the video and solve. Hopefully you are easily able to solve this problem with the help of your calculator. However, the calculator does not do the thinking for you. If you enter the numbers correctly, your calculator told you the answer is 6R6. This means 6 remainder 6. However, you still have work to do. The answer must still be interpreted by looking back at what the question is asking. This question asks how many pens did each student get and how many are left over. The answer would be that each student gets six pens and there are six pens left over, choice B. The next few keys are related to fractions. Let's start by learning how to enter a fraction into our calculators. If you want to enter a fraction, use the buttons boxed in white. For the fraction 1 half, you would enter 1 numerator button and 2 denominator button. At this point, you may want to pause the video to practice entering other fractions into the calculator or practice entering equations involving fractions. If you want to simplify a fraction, you would use the simp button boxed in white. This stands for simplify. To simplify 2 fourths, you would enter the fraction 2 fourths. 2 numerator, 4 denominator. Then press the enter button so that the fraction moves to the right side of your display. Lastly, press simp enter. If you are curious to know what factor the calculator used to simplify, press the FAC button standing for factor. When I press the FAC button for this fraction, a 2 appears. This means the calculator divided both the numerator and denominator by 2 to simplify. There is another way to simplify fractions. This way may be useful when you know a number that both the numerator and denominator is divisible by. In other words, you know a factor of the numerator and denominator. Start by entering the fraction 2 fourths into your calculator. 2 numerator, 4 denominator. Press enter to move the fraction to the right side of your display. Next, select a number that you can divide into both the numerator and denominator a factor of the numerator and denominator. I know that 2 can divide into both parts of this fraction, so I will select 2. Now that we selected our factor, press SIMP 2 ENTER. Let's simplify another fraction using this method. Enter the fraction 8 24ths into your calculator. Press ENTER to move the fraction to the right side of your display. Think of a number that both 8 and 24 are divisible by. Press simplify, that number, and enter. When you originally pressed enter to move the fraction to the right side of your display, you may have noticed a little symbol in your display. This symbol tells you that the fraction is not in its simplest form. After reducing or simplifying the fraction, the symbol will disappear only if the fraction is in its simplest form. If the symbol is still there, you will need to further simplify. If you cannot think of another factor, just continue to press Simplify Enter until the symbol disappears and the fraction is in its simplest form. Here is a sample EOG problem that can be solved using the Simplify function on the TI-15. Nina bought the candies shown below. She gave all of the red candies to Eric. What fraction of the candies did Nina give to Eric? Students will typically say she gave three-twelfths of the candies to Eric. However, once students look at the answer choices, they realize their answer is not an option. At this point, students typically think they got the answer wrong. Before assuming you have the wrong answer, check to see if your answer could be represented differently. In this case, you could simplify getting answer choice C, one-fourth. Let's take a look at mixed numbers. To enter the mixed number four and three-eighths, press four, unit, 
and then enter the fraction 3 eighths, 3 numerator, 8 denominator. Another handy button on the TI-15 turns improper fractions into mixed numbers and mixed numbers into improper fractions. Enter the mixed number 4 and 3 eighths into your calculator by pressing 4, unit, 3 numerator, 8 denominator. Press the equal or enter sign to move the number to the right side of your display. Then press the button directly under mode. This changes your mixed number into an improper fraction. Press it again and your improper fraction is changed back to a mixed number. Another way to work with fractions in your calculator is to change them to decimals. This may be helpful when ordering or comparing fractions. Sometimes when you are struggling to order or compare fractions, it is helpful to change them to decimals, then compare the decimals. You can change a fraction to a decimal or a decimal to a fraction by using the F to D button in the top middle of your calculator. Enter the fraction into your calculator. Press Enter to move the fraction to the right side of your display. Then press the F to D button. Take a look at the two fractions here. It's tricky to compare the fractions 3 fourths and 5 eighths. Try changing them to decimals to see if it's easier to decide which one is larger. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video. You can find the PowerPoint slides from this video in the comments below. These may be printed and used as posters to display the different functions in your classroom.